Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Stardew Valley. In the last episode, we took our very first trip on the bus to the Calico Desert, where we met Sandy inside her shop, and we also found some interesting little bits and bobs to forage up, to bring back to our farm, and hopefully give out as gifts. I was actually thinking that maybe Emily would like one of these, the coconuts or the cactus fruits, because she's pretty good friends with Sandy herself, so we can show her that we went to the desert by bringing her back one of those fresh fruits. Yesterday was Friday though, which meant the traveling merchant was in town, and I was very, very impressed with her wares. We finally managed to find our next pufferfish, so that means we can bring this to Demetrius today and finally finish off that quest. He'll finally be able to study a little pufferfish, maybe not technically from Stardew Valley because who knows where the traveling merchant found this one, but I'm sure he will appreciate it anyway. Then I found this lucky lunch in her shop. It's a special little meal that seems to give us a plus three in luck when we eat it, so I thought it might be a good thing for us to take with us down into the mines. Hopefully it'll give us a little bit more luck when it comes to finding gemstones and whatnot. I'm not exactly sure how the luck stat works, but um, we'll see if we can get any clues. We'll see if we can find the aquamarine for one. That's what um, Emily is looking for inside her bulletin board bundle, and it's one of the very, very last things that we need. So if anything is going to give us luck, surely it will be the lucky lunch. Since we're headed up that way toward Demetrius' house though, and toward the mines of course, we might as well also bring some items to um, Robin. Maybe she could get to work on our stable? We'll just have to smelt a little bit more iron before we'll have enough to um, get our first stable, and in turn our very first horse too. But it's another super bright and sunny day, which means that all of our animals can come out and enjoy the sunshine while we finish up our work. We'll go ahead and put our eggs right into their machines, make some nice mayonnaise too, make sure all of this is smelting away because the last time, the spirit of our grandfather was not too happy that we were going to leave the farm before finishing our work. So this time the farm will be well taken care of. We have our hardwood and our iron bars for Robin, and we also have our pufferfish ready for Demetrius. So I guess we'll go up this way today. We don't have a, a shortcut straight to Robin's house after all. The closest one would probably be the mines themselves. So we'll just take the long route and pick up some of the uh, spice berries along the way too. Since we are looking at the very, very last couple of days of summer, this is also our last chance to grab up any of those forageable items. Lots of spice berries today. Maybe we should uh, give one to Linus if he's in the area. Maybe he's looking for a little bit of extra food. He's not inside his tent though, and he's not by his fire, so we'll just have to keep our eyes open for him. If we happen to pass him before we go into the mines, there he is. Then we'll offer him one of these lovely little spice berries. This is a great gift, thank you. You are welcome, Linus. Yeah, he must be trying to forage for food out here himself, so we don't want to take it all. Oh, Demetrius, wait a second. Good thing I saw you, because I would have been looking all over for you. We have a lovely pufferfish for you to study. There you are, the specimen looks perfect. I'm going to get it on ice straight away. Thanks, Jess. All right, so Demetrius isn't too bothered that it's not actually from the valley. Though in all honesty, I suppose it could be. Who knows who she's actually getting these strange items from? But Robin, would you mind maybe making our very first stable? We'll see if we can construct farm buildings and go all the way to the horse stable. Allows you to keep and ride a horse, horse included thankfully, so we don't actually have to buy the horse too. It's 10,000 gold, but we have more than enough to pay her for that too, so let's go ahead and build our first stable. Now where should we actually put this one? I guess I'm close to our house and close to the um, exit to the house too, so we can just zip right out of here on our horse and hopefully um, get around the town a little bit faster. We'll place it right here beside um, our little bin, and if we need to move it, if it turns out to be a, a rotten location, then we can always come back to Robin and see if she wouldn't mind. Okay, I'll start working on your new stable the day after tomorrow. I always take festivals off. Oh, that's right, because um, tomorrow is actually the dance of the moonlight jellies. So good for you, Robin. It's a good thing you're taking that day off. We don't want you to be working too hard while everybody else is out celebrating. Pierre is the one person in town who always seems to work, like no matter what day it is, even if it's right in the middle of the uh, festival itself. 
But we'll move these deep into our pack. We'll keep our lucky lunch out though because I do want to use this. Now yesterday I went into the mines to do a little bit more exploring and I did make it down to floor 100. We have a chest down here but I haven't opened it yet because I wanted to make sure that we could see this together. Oh my gosh, wait a second, it's a star fruit? Oh my goodness, our very first star fruit. I thought it was going to be like a new pair of shoes or something because we always seem to get that from the chest. You found a star drop. It's strange, but the taste reminds you of fluffy kitties. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was what we put as our very favorite thing at the start of this game, fluffy kitties. I mean, I don't know if I really want to eat something that tastes like fluffy kitties. That sounds a little bit morbid, but our maximum energy level has increased. All right, that's pretty good. So that means that we can do even more work down in the mines. Our very first star drop in a very menacing place as well. Like, I guess this is a little pool that we could possibly fish in. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be lava or, again, something rather morbid. But we'll do a little bit of fishing here, too, just to see what might be down here. Um, driftwood? <laughs> I was hoping it would be a fish. Well, let's try one more time. Okay, just some trash. Yeah, this doesn't seem like the best place for us to fish. Well, we'll tuck these things away too, and then we'll go ahead and uh, scoot down this ladder and see what these levels of the mines are going to be like. Right off the bat, we already have a little amethyst and a ladder too. Oh my goodness, maybe we don't even need our lucky lunch. Maybe we're going to have a lucky day without it. But we must be getting super, super close to the end of the mines. I would imagine any time known an Omnigeode. Seriously, we didn't eat our lucky lunch yet. It's still sitting right in our backpack. Well, all the better for us and Clint will be happy too because we'll have something for him to uh, crack open as soon as we get back to town. Now we have a little slime down here, so let's get rid of you before we go any further. Uh, he has already slimed me too, making me a little bit slower. And we don't need him pelting off of us as we're trying to crack open the stones. Thankfully, he did have a ladder to give us though. So again, we have a way to uh, get off of this floor very quickly if we start to get too overwhelmed. There are lots of uh, little healy creatures in these caves too. We want to get rid of these before we go much further because they'll just heal all of the damage that we do to the enemies. And we are getting quite a bit hurt, so maybe it is time to eat our lucky lunch after all. Like, I don't know how I can get much luckier down here today. We've already found quite a few things and we've only been mining for a few minutes. But there doesn't seem to be much more in um, this portion of the mines for us to gather up. So let's scoot on down one of these ladders to floor 103. I guess that means we'll be getting to our next um, elevator pretty quickly too and an emerald. Excellent. I think it was um, Penny who really liked those, the dwarf of course, and probably a Crobus as well. We'll have to pay Crobus another visit sometime soon. We haven't seen him in quite a while, our little uh, shadow monster friend. We see quite a few of his cousins in the mines, but um, they're not quite as friendly as the sewer monster himself. And now we have a bat invasion, so you know what? Let's go right down that ladder. Good thing we had that available to us. We don't need to deal with more bats. Those are always the trickiest because they just swarm you from every direction, and unless they're all clustered together they can be a little bit tricky to take care of. Oh look at that room up there. There are tons and tons of boxes to break open. We absolutely have to get our hands on all of those. Maybe we'll find even more geodes. There we go. Let's crack them all open. Some more emeralds, some wood and stone. Those are all good things too because we do need the extra resources. More omni geodes. Oh my goodness. Like we are having the absolute luckiest day. We are going to have to figure out how we can make on that lucky lunch on our own. It looked like it probably had a star fruit in the middle. So it's a good thing that we picked up some star fruit seeds from a Sandy. We'll have to make sure we plant those in our greenhouse as soon as possible, as soon as we have the sprinklers to spare. And then hopefully we can find the recipe too if we don't have it already. And there's our ladder again. So floor 105, and that means that we have another elevator so we can get down even further in the mines next time we want to uh, take another trip down here. I think we'll try to go a little bit further though. It's only 8 p.m. and I mean today is the absolute luckiest day that we have ever had in the deeper portions of the mine. So let's try to milk every last bit that we can out of this. Oh my goodness, a strange bun from that guy. That little shadow monster dropped a strange bun. What's inside? It gives us some quite a bit of energy though. 
a good decent chunk of health too, so it might be a good thing for us to take with us into the mines anyway. Right now we have our trusty little field snacks, though we haven't had to uh, break into too many today. And is that actually a diamond too? Well, I think I know what Jess's favorite meal is now. She is definitely going to prefer the lucky lunches over everything else that she could possibly make. Let's get rid of you though, so you're not munching on our heels while we go a deeper into the mines. And we'll try to figure out if we can find another ladder around here. It's getting um, close to 10 o'clock, and I don't want to stay in here too late, just in case. Mushrooms galore in this cave, being guarded by the slimes as usual. We'll go ahead and break that guy, grab up his coal too. We actually needed the uh, extra coal, so that'll help us out quite a bit. And yeah, I think we're probably going to turn back now. It's almost 11, so we might as well scoot up the ladder and uh, head back home before Jess gets too tired, as she's being chased by the bats yet again. So we'll leave the mines and bring back all of this treasure that we've managed to find. Daisy is going to be quite impressed. She often guards our treasure in the purple chest up by her water dish, so she knows a thing or two about our special trinkets. We're still, um, cloning, I guess? The diamond inside this crystallarium down here right by our trash can. So we'll go ahead and sell off this diamond instead. Our solar essences, our void essences, our crabs. Um, we'll sell the bat wings too because we do have quite a few of those in the chest already and the rest of things we should probably save as resources. It looks like everything is done on the farm too, our cheese and our mayonnaise. We'll have a, quite the profit to take along with us right into the beginning of fall. My plan was to actually replace all of our blueberries with um, cranberries. We should have access to the cranberry plant to uh, hopefully put in the main portion of our ranch, and that should give us just as much gold as the blueberry has for us um, all throughout the summertime season. Fingers crossed any Way. As long as we use our preserve jars with them, we should be able to continue our lucky streak. Now let's pop our two bits of trash into our recycling machines, the two unluckiest portions of our entire day. And then we'll pat Daisy on the head and then scoot off to bed because tomorrow should be the dance of the moonlight jellies. So I guess we're going to get to a go with Sam most likely. I'm sure he's going to be there as well. It takes place at night though, so we do have um, a little while to wait. That gives us plenty of time to run off to Clint's to crack open our geodes, to make sure that all of our animals are nice and well fed and maybe to uh, bring some gifts around town too. In fact, let's see if we can um, give gifts to everyone in town again. We've given them quite a few, but it looks like it has reset. So we can go give Sam another gift. We'll see if maybe he would like um, one of the things that we found in the desert as well. Since we did let him know that we were taking the bus, going on a grand trip to explore the world, I'm sure he would appreciate a little souvenir. But this letter should be about um, the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies, of course. Dear Jess, Tonight around 10 o'clock p.m., a rare and beautiful event will take place. The Moonlight Jellies will be passing by Pelican Town on their long journey south for the winter. We're all gathering at the beach to watch. You don't want to miss this. See you tonight from Demetrius. So Demetrius is actually putting on this event as opposed to um, Lewis. Typically, the mayor is the one who sends us these letters to make sure that we won't miss out on all of the local events. But since Demetrius loves to study all of the uh, plant life, all of the animal life too, it makes sense that he would be the one to let us know that the moonlight jellies are passing through. But oh my goodness, the very last blueberry harvest of the season. This is perfect. On the very last day of summer, we managed to gather up over a hundred of our lucky blueberries again. We'll go ahead and place them right back into these preserves jars, and then that should hopefully pay for um, the stable itself. And unfortunately, we do have to track down all of our lovely animals animals. We were out so late that we didn't actually close their barn and coop doors, so they're already out and about for the morning. The eggs will be much easier for us to gather up though because at least they always stay right inside the coop. So we can just come in here, grab up all the eggs without any of those little chickens or ducks in the way. It's actually a little bit easier to uh, grab the eggs when they're outside anyway. We might have to keep that in mind for later. Now fall might be right around the corner, but that means winter is looming too. So I think what we'll want to do is build another one of those silos to make sure that all of our animals can still be fed. 
We have much more animals on the farm than we did last time, last winter, so they're going to need quite a bit of hay to keep them fed all throughout the season. We don't want to find that we've a run out of hay right in the middle of winter. I guess if that did happen, we could still go to Marnie's shop to see if she had a little bit extra to give us, but I would hate to have it get to that point, so we'll try our best to make sure that we have just enough inside our stock. We have tons of grass to cut out here anyway, so it should be pretty easy for us to gather up, but our blueberries are coming along wonderfully too. Now we just need some more of those sprinklers. And in fact, let's head off to Clint's next. We'll see if um, maybe we can get some little special iridium trinkets out of some of these different geodes. That would be particularly lucky too. Not sure if our lucky streak is continuing today. Maybe we should take a quick peek at the fortune teller, in fact, just to check, just to see what it's going to be like. I mean, yesterday was so great. I would be very, very surprised if it's going to continue, but the spirits are in good humor today. I think you'll have a little extra luck. Excellent. So let's uh, use our minecart track to go straight over to Clint's. Hopefully he's open today. I wonder if he works on festivals. Now that I think about it, I mean, it looks like Pam is working, so she is still running the bus even though it's the dance of the moonlight jellies. Let's go um, into town and see if Clint is the same. Maybe he has the same work ethic as Pierre. Yeah, looks like he's ready to get started on our geodes. So we'll start off with all of our magma geodes. We have five of these for you to crack open. Um, Some barite? It looks like we already had that one too, so we don't need to give that to Gunther. And there we go, some iridium, excellent. So we might have just enough to uh, hopefully make another one of those iridium bars. We have some basalt, we have some uh, clay, and then I think we've seen that one too, some Neptunite. So let's crack open our Omnigeodes next. Some stone, really some plain old stone inside our Omni Geode. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. That's okay though, all things considered, I would uh, say that was a pretty good success. We have the Iridium that we were looking for anyway. Nothing to donate to you yet, Gunther. We'll go ahead and tuck some of these different minerals inside our bag, and then we'll go back to the farm to pick up some gifts for our friends. Oh, and that reminds me, we do still need to accept uh, our reward for this quest. 750 gold. So now we just need to get to the bottom of the mines, which I think we're well on our way to. We need to um, get that truffle oil for Lewis and then we need to finish the uh, beet quest for Mr. Key. And since um, it's almost the fall time, we should be able to uh, plant the beets. Oh, excellent. It looks like the diamond is ready and it might actually still be uh, cooking away in there, cloning itself yet again. So do we actually have like an endless supply of these diamonds? Well, that's pretty nice. We might as well throw this straight into the bin then with all of our other minerals. And let's make sure we get our iridium ores smelting away inside our furnaces as soon as possible. And the poppy too, we can't forget to pick this. This is the last day that it's going to be around, so we'll grab this up and we'll bring it to Penny today. We learned from Pam yesterday that Penny really, really loves some poppy flowers. It turns out that she's probably one of the only people in town who enjoys them. So we might as well give her our last lovely gold star poppy of the season. And as far as everyone else goes, let's bring the cactus fruit. We'll see if anyone might like the coconut too. And we have all of these lovely summertime spangles to pass around the town as well. I'm sure we could find a lot of people who would like those as um, one last hurrah to the season. We'll bring some ice cream for Vincent if we happen to pass him, maybe even Jazz too. Though we do know that a Vincent prefers the grapes actually. So why don't we go ahead and uh, keep one of the grapes in our back pockets as well as a special little treat for Sam's little brother. All right, I would say that we're fully prepared now. We have lots and lots of gifts to bring back to the town. So hopefully we can find some people wandering around waiting for the dance of the moonlight jellies to begin. We have plenty of time to kill after all and and it looks like Evelyn is uh, taking care of her flowers, so let's give her this lovely magenta summertime spangle to brighten her day. Oh my, it looks wonderful. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much, Evelyn. She loves it when we give her all of the tulips that we grow in the springtime too. Sweet peas are in bloom right now. They've got such a wonderful fragrance, haven't they? Also, it sounds like she probably likes the sweet peas too. Well, I think we still have a couple of those stashed away so we can give those to her in uh, the future. Now let's see if we can hunt down Sam. It's um, pretty late in the afternoon, so I'm not sure if he would still be inside the house. 
Now it looks like he has moved on, so he must be somewhere else. In fact, nobody is in the house today. Not even Vincent and not even Jody. Maybe she's shopping at Pierre's? But there's Emily. So let's try the uh, coconut on her just to see if she recognizes this from uh, the Calico Desert. Thanks. Well, I mean, I guess she wasn't super impressed, but I figure she's happy to know that we met her friend. Now, Maru, let's offer you one of these lovely uh, purple summertime spangles. This is a super gift, thank you. She really seems to like that. She seems like she uh, enjoys the color purple in general since she does have that nice purple shirt on. Someday, I'm going to become a world-class inventor. You're lucky to be friends with me. Just kidding, <laughs> oh, Maru. Hopefully she has uh, fixed those robots that she showed us the other day. Here's Jody and Kent though, walking home for the day. I'm not sure if we have anything that Kent might like, but let's try giving Jody one of the flowers too. Thank you, this makes my day really special. Yeah, she really seems to enjoy those just like Sam. They both have a, a soft spot for flowers. And Jazz. All right, let's try to give her um, one of these ice cream cones. She might like that a little bit more than on the flower, hopefully. You've already given Jazz a gift today. I hope she liked it then. I love presents, thank you. Excellent, so five hearts with a Jazz as well. We're getting to know her too. She's part of a Shane's family, and since we're such good friends with him, it would be nice to get to know Jazz too. Now it's starting to get a little bit late, so I wonder if some of these people might be in their houses? Not Penny, unfortunately. And she wasn't um, walking the kids home either, so I wonder where she is. Maybe she's sitting under one of her trees, Alex looks like he's probably going to visit his dog, Dusty. Well, at this point, we really just need to find a Sam and Vincent. So let's scoot on over here just to um, take a quick trip to the traveling merchants again. Since it's a Sunday, she should be in town, and she might have some more interesting goods in there too. If she has more of those uh, lucky lunches, then I am certainly going to fill my pockets with those. So what do you have for sale today? Slime and leeks. Well, George might be happy to see the leeks, but not at that price. We have eggs and tulips and bombs, crystal fruits and cave carrots. Unfortunately, nothing too interesting for us to uh, actually purchase today. We already have our rare seed too. We need to plant this in the fall time, so um, I guess tomorrow we'll get started on that. That should help us uh, finally impress old master cannoli. I believe his name was over in the uh, secret woods. He was looking for the sweetest taste and that seed might just have what we need to unlock it. And there's Sam and Vincent. Oh, Sam must have been spending the day with his little brother. So we'll go ahead and give Vincent his lovely grapes. And then uh, Sam, we have a souvenir for you from the desert that we went to the other day and he really loved that. Oh yeah, this is my absolute favorite. Well, that's cool. So he must have taken a trip to the desert one day himself. Somehow he has gotten his hands on those very rare cactus fruits and he's probably been craving it ever since. The only person we didn't manage to find was Penny and we still have her poppy waiting inside our pockets. But I guess if we can't find her today, if her doors are closed, yeah, she's already locked her doors because it is a little bit late, then we'll just give this to her tomorrow on the very first day of fall. Now we only have one hour to wait until the dance of the moonlight jellies too and everybody is already inside. So I guess we'll um, wait very, very patiently right by the lake. We could do a little bit of fishing while we wait, in fact. We don't often fish during the nighttime. And maybe that's why we don't go fishing during the nighttime. Trash again. Well, today has certainly not been the luckiest day in regards to fishing. But we have caught all of the fish that we needed in the uh, summertime. We just need the walleye, I want to say. Was it the walleye that we needed for the uh, night fishing bundle? And that's something that we can only find while it's raining in the fall time. But it's finally 10 o'clock, so the dance of the moonlight jellies has officially begun. And here we are. So everybody should be on the beach, or on the docks rather, waiting for the little jellyfish to come drifting through the ocean. So Marnie was the very first one on the docks over here. Let's talk to her. That's a heavy load of people for an ancient wooden dock. I'll stay over here near the beach. Yeah, probably a, a pretty good idea in all honesty. I can't believe summer's over. I feel like it just started. And then Haley's over here too. We know that she loves the summer. I should have brought my camera. I always forget. Oh, poor Haley. A whole year later and she still can't get a picture of those jellyfish. Now Penny's over here too. We were looking for you earlier. Unfortunately, we can't give her the poppy now. Life is so easy for a jellyfish. Just letting the waves carry you onward forever. Pam and Gus are also quite far away from the rest of the crowds. Don't tell Gus, but I'm a little disappointed there's no buffet tonight. 
Moonlight jellies. I wonder how they taste. No, 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 guys. Don't think about grabbing those jellyfish out of the ocean. I would never try it, of course. Good. We don't want to see you going fishing with a willy. He's way down there by his shop. We'll have to check on him, too. We have Vincent over here playing with his brother again. I want to see the rare green jelly. And then Sebastian. I thought I saw something moving there. Something big. Something dark. You know, I remember him saying that uh, last year just trying to scare you. And that's why. We thought maybe there was something ominous waiting in the ocean, but that was not quite the case. Such a rare and exciting thing. That's nice because she doesn't often enjoy to spend time around these big crowds like this. She doesn't really seem to have a taste for the festivals. I wonder if they're poisonous. Maybe I shouldn't push Sebastian into the water after all. Yeah, even though he's trying to prank us, that probably wouldn't be the best idea. Certainly not the best way to end out the summer. There's more people on the dock, of course, but I feel like we might be missing some. I didn't see Maru or Demetrius, and we know that he must be around here somewhere. Yeah, way down here. Even um, across the little bridge, too. All right, we have Harvey down here. We have a line is way, way up in the shadows. I'll just sneak up when the jellies arrive. I don't want to bother anyone. Oh, Linus, haven't you learned by now? You won't bother a single person in the valley. You can stand next to us if you want to. And Demetrius must be so excited. The moonlight jelly. What a remarkable species. We're very lucky that they stop here on their long journey south. It's unknown why they are attracted to light. Very curious. Oh, that's right. They set up on um, the little lanterns to help attract the jellyfish over to the docks. <laughs> it's past my bedtime. Oh, Robin. Hey, did you see that candle boat? I crafted it myself. Yeah, so that's what she's been working on all day. That's why she couldn't help us out with our stable because she had so many of these little tiny uh, lantern boats to make. And we have Mario over here. It's kind of cold, actually. I guess the fall is right around the corner, and I am very, very excited for that. Well, summer's over. To be honest, I'll be happy to say goodbye to those blasted mosquitoes. Yeah, even Harvey has had enough of this long, long summer. Let's talk to Evelyn and um, George, too. What? Why are you looking at me like that? You think I'm too old to enjoy something like this? Of course not, George. We just wanted to come and talk to you. I remember seeing the jellies once as a little girl. Oh, how I jumped with joy when they arrived. But that was long ago. I'm a lot less energetic now. I bet you'll still be very, very excited when they start floating on the ocean, though. These candles are romantic, aren't they? Yeah, looks like uh, she's actually spending time with Pierre this time. He doesn't have any shops to run. Make sure to swing by the shop tomorrow to get your fall seeds. Yeah, but he's still in the back of his mind, trying to uh, think of ways to make a little bit of extra gold. That's just Pierre for you. The jellies were here a year ago, and they'll be back again a year from now. Nature is amazing. And jazz, of course. I hope there are babies this year. Now, Willie, you're not humoring any ideas of us scooping up these jellyfish either, right? Most nightfish would be scared of the light. These are strange ones. I guess he's a little bit more cautious of these um, unusual jellyfish. Good evening, Jess. Hope you can find some time to relax before the harvest season. Yeah, this is also um, Ken's first time with us being here anyway. His first time at the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies, and he's spending it right next to Jody. There, I just saw something glowing. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, I guess it's not quite time yet, Jody, but she's very excited too. Look out there at the endless sea. Deep underwater, all kinds of life forms are moving around in the dark eerie, isn't it? Well, Emily seems to appreciate the uh, beauty of the ocean. I wore my special shoes tonight. No one noticed. Oh, but he's still sitting very, very close, standing very close to Emily, hoping that he can catch her eye. If we keep polluting the oceans, the jellies will surely go extinct. It's already in the process of happening. What a shame. We have no respect for nature anymore. Yeah, and with Elliot living so close to uh, the beach, he probably knows that best. But I guess it's time for us to officially start the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies because I think we've talked to everyone. It didn't look like the wizard was around. We checked all the nooks and crannies anyway. So, Lewis, would you mind uh, getting started? Good evening, Jess. The Moonlight Jellies are close. I already saw one glowing in the distance. Once we launch the candle boat, they'll come up to the docks and say hello. All right, so go ahead and launch it, Lewis. What do you think? Should I launch the boat now? Yeah, let's get started here. Let's see if we can uh, find any adorable little jellies floating around in the ocean. Oh, this time we're right next to uh, Sam's parents, it looks like. So we're spending time with this whole family as the jellies come drifting in.
And there they are, some of the very first jellyfish. It's just as beautiful as I remember. But of course, things have changed so much for our little farmer since the last time she saw them. Now she has a big, giant farm to take care of, tons of crops, tons of brand new little animals running around, our chickens, our ducks, and maybe even a family to think about in the future. That's why it's so fitting that she's standing right next to Jody and Kent tonight. Maybe that'll urge her to kind of think about where she wants to be in the future too, once the fall time starts to settle in, and once she has some more time to spend with those she's closest to. But the jellyfish are beautiful as always. Tiny little baby ones, green ones coming up to greet us. The glow of summer has faded now, and the moonlight jellies carry on toward the great unknown. But they stopped here just to say hello, just to wave one last goodbye to all of their friends in Stardew Valley. So now it is very, very late. We'll go ahead and throw some of our very last mayonnaise into the bin to sell off, and then we'll drop Jess straight into bed. She has had quite the night after all, and tomorrow's going to be the very first day of fall, so she has a lot of work ahead of her. So in the next episode, we'll have to get to work on our fall time crops, our cranberries, our beets, of course, and and that lovely uh, mystery seed too that Master Cannoli is waiting for. But for now, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!